So here's shock. Uh, about, about three points. All right, that's your clock. Throw two. Kiss Kate. Show me Brick. Boots. Kill Shenny Brick. Boots. What's that going to be Brick? Boots. You started, you stayed down longer. I was like, oh, I'm not supposed to lift up. <laughs> no, no, you were fine. It's it break my, my butt. You, no, you're fine. You three slide down. All right, before we get cranking the class, we need to pick up with something that happened last week. We don't necessarily need to go into the details of what's precipitating this conversation, but we're going to have this conversation. Yes. We've talked about it before. Most of you room have heard me say this before mindset is the most important thing that's what hey. you're learning here is yeah. yes. physical part you learn the mindset hey okay in every traditional dojo there is one overarching precept which sometimes are written is written on scrolls not on these scrolls but on scrolls somebody tell me what that phrase is you look you look Wait until I invite you in. Okay. Yeah. All right, come on. Slide next one. Go around the back. Slide next one. Go around the back. Ah! Go around the back. It's okay. Go around the back. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. Yes. Being humble and respectful. Nah, there is no first attack in karate. How many people have heard that? Right? Okay. Sometimes yeah. it's written on scrolls up here. This says Bushido. That says Kanaka. No first attack in karate. What does that mean? Short and sweet version. Karate is defense only. Okay. What else? That you should always be looking at it as you're ready to go because someone did something. Okay. What else? Running is your first mm -hmm. choice. Well, yeah, but that's not what that phrase means. We don't start fights. Period. We don't start nothing. We'll, don't start nothing. We'll be nothing. Right? Okay. That's a short version of that. Yes. Okay. Now. You came up through the kids' class in the dojo, correct? Close. You do, you, you. Close. Okay. Something happens at the end of every kids' class that we do not do in the adult class for reasons that are my own. What is it? What is it? Five. Uh, the dojo kum. The dojo kum. All right. So you can tell me, not name all five of them, but what is the concept of the dojo kum? What are they? Principles to live by. There you go. Okay. Five. Sometimes it's referred to as five morals of the dojo, five moral principles, five things to live your life by. All right? Now we're going to work. One to strive for the perfection of character, one to defend the path of truth, one to, uh, one to foster the spirit of effort, one to honor the principles of courtesy, one to guard against impetuous courage. There we go. All right? Simple enough, right? What's number four? What was number four? Slow. One to honor. One to honor the principles of courtesy. Courtesy. Right. Yes. So how does that relate to there is no first attack in Kanaka? If you're courteous. Basically, um, by attacking first, you're breaking the, the principles of courtesy. Yeah, true, but I want the reverse of that. You're absolutely right, but I want the reverse of that. Hold on a second. I didn't hear what you said. No, I was just saying if you're... If you're courteous to the people, there might not be. There we go. Don't start. be rude to people. Won't start a fight. What are you about to say? Uh, sort of the same thing. Sort of the same thing. All right, we'll leave it at that. All right. Basically, you are polite to everybody. Yes. Up to and including when you do that. You do it in a very polite and respectful manner. All right. How do you do that? <laughs> By making it quick and as painless as possible. Yes. Right. You know. We've seen, all seen movies or whatever. Okay, so there is the principle of we don't start fights, we're not rude to people in order to avoid fights from a strategic standpoint. You are polite to people. Yes. If you meet someone for the first time, who is literally four times your size and skilled enough to 
kill you in nine different ways without breaking a sweat. How strategically advantageous is it to then insult them at the first meeting? Not very, sir. Not very. Zero. Zero. We Do must not. be talking about the Do last week. The details, don't matter. details don't matter. Details don't matter. We're having this discussion because we need to have this discussion. Yes. Post. Post. Do not be rude to people, whether you think it's funny or not. Yes. Until you know these people. Yes. But if you get the wrong person, you will get hurt. Yes. Let's start with it. Let's do nothing. All right. All right. Questions on that? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Well, we're actually going to do sort of probably not. Sort if we do anything one on one, it'll be very this, this. All right. So, beyond that, for those of you that didn't remember, forgot, or didn't know, since you're all here on the last Wednesday of the month, last Wednesday, Monday and Wednesday of the month, I like to do the other things in the kitchen rather than just drive. This is the first time in several months that y'all have shown up on the last Wednesday or Monday. You didn't have the brain here, but you did. Go grab it. All right, here's what I want you guys to do. Do you five on that rack right there? Grab one of the wooden swords off of the rack. Bring it. Yes. Go. Reach up, slide it down. We'll get into it. Doesn't matter which one. Just grab one that makes you happy.
actual uh, and actual katana. There's a guard right here called Suwa. Which if you look at your handle, it's kind of stops being handled and starts being blade fairly obviously after most of you guys is just little Google. So uh, There we go. That's good, right there. All right. She hit me in the back of the head. I'm just telling you. I wasted 10, 15 minutes of class. So not six minutes. All right. So when we are going to hold this, we're going to hold it like it is in its scabbard. So what I want you to do is I want you to take the sword, put it in your right hand, handle up, cutting edge towards you. Right hand, handle it right, the other right hand, and the other way, and the other way, and the other way. Turn it 180 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. Cutting edges towards you. The pointy end, the handle end. The pointy end, point behind you on your left side. Your other left side, military left side. There we go. Take your left hand, put it right where the handle stops and the blade starts. On the blade part, not on the handle part. And then pull your hand back like you're going to do it instead. Okay. Which is where it sits. By your thumb. And it should be, it should be, it should be, as you see, sometimes it's kind of sloping down. I'm holding mine here just because it has better balance. If I hold this one this way, this is even really blade heavy. I should have a slightly downward chance to it. When it actually sits in your belt, the end of the handle is going to be in line with the center line of your body. For me, it's about two fingers above my belly button. So, now what you do is take your right hand, reach across, fingers are up, thumb is pointing that way, grip, draw, and bring the sword in front of it. With the left hand on top. Left hand is on the bottom. Right. When you are gripping the sword, your right hand, uh, in case you didn't know, there are no left-handed samurai. So everybody becomes right-handed with a katana. Us. Whether Us. you're right-handed or not. So your right hand is going to come at the very edge of where the handle stops and the blade starts so that the web of your thumb and forefinger and your forearm bones form a straight line with the back of the blade. You're going to wrap your fingers around it. Pinky finger and ring finger are very tight. Middle finger is medium tight. Thumb and forefinger are not very tight at all. So you're gripping this way, like you're trying to squeeze something this way. And your left hand, you're going to bring up. Your left pinky finger is going to go under the handle, thusly. You're going to grip the sword exactly the same way as your right hand. And as you come down, you're going to end up with the tip of the blade, either nose or throat high, depending upon your body structure. This is our middle guard, just like Chulang Kamai Karate and Chulang Kamai here. Can at least Half of you see Sensei Tim in this mirror. Right. At least the other two see me and or him in this in one of the mirrors. Right. All right. So, for now, we're just going to leave the feet where they are. What we're going to do, we're going to bring the tip end towards our face first. This is how a sword moves. Before you crack yourself in the skull, you're going to push up. And let the sword drop behind you. Don't duck your head. Bring the sword above your head without ducking it. Let it touch your spine. As I cut out, I'm just going to reverse that process. Without hitting the ceiling. Okay. Now we want our left hand landing about our belt knot level. Where we need to be. So again, we're going to bring the sword back. Press it up over our head. Touch the spine. Cut out. Any advice?
advice on where the elbows should be when they're back we'll coming to that in just a second. I want to get to this part first, and then we're coming to the, this, the more detail. So a couple times that takes. And cut. Eight. Cut. There we go. From here, cut back to here, single count. First thing that happens is the sword moves towards your head and up, not shoulder spur. Yes. you guys to do for now just because I don't want to explain the rest of this I just want you to drop the sword down next to you and just relax that way for a second there we go okay a couple things first let's answer Greg's question once the sword starts moving towards our face you'll notice elbows are in and down just like everything else that we do in all of our other martial arts as they start to go up I want to try to maintain that same elbow configuration as much as I can. One, it makes my triangle, which we talked about before. It is very important in the body structure. Two, if I do this, what have I just done? Disengage. Disengage everything except my deltoids, which we hate, and left yourself open. Left myself open. I have stuck my elbows out to somebody who's trying to kill me with a three foot long straight razor. Yeah. This is not usually a good idea. So we want to try to keep the elbows in snug, but we don't want to try and force it in. You know, that goldie block zone we were talking about. Now, as we go out, the hands come first, and I project out. How many people in here have ever been fishing before? Right? You cast, right? That's basically what we're trying to do, is project out. the tip end of the sword. Now, how do we prevent all of this momentum from going? In our hand, how we describe gripping the sword, just twisting from the little finger in, how I teach making a fist in karate from the little finger in, is how we stop it. As I'm coming down, once it reaches the point where I want it to stop, I'm going to wring both hands in like I'm trying to wring out a towel this way. So I'm pushing this knuckle and this knuckle into the handle to stop it. It's called shibui. This way. You end up with this or going too far, you're just letting the momentum go. So we need to twist. Yes, let's pull this. Okay. Uh, what I want you to do is I want you to do something really stupid and I want you to swing up this way without clipping the, the skin as you do a couple. Okay. This, right? We don't want it. Oh. We're here. A couple of reasons. One, when he decides to do that, it's easy to... He's got nothing. So if he does properly and comes in, he cuts. There are other things I can do, but I, he's still got that lock. Oh. You couldn't do what you did the first time the way he came in just now? The first time I'll do it, if he comes flat up, this. This. he'll never make it. This. Now, when he comes properly, if he does nothing to maneuver this, he just cuts properly. Yeah. Really? No, he cuts up. That's exactly what you do to get him to do that. Get that elbow. Yeah. Okay, so I want to make it. Right here. Yeah. Okay. Hmm? Oh. We don't 
don't want up. The first thing that moves is always your tip. First cut is called men cut, men head, so it's head cutting. Eight. Eight. Up. Eight. Oh. Set one. Relax your shoulder. Like everything else, this is all about the relaxation. Now, in order to avoid hitting the ceiling, you're starting with the tip end pretty well, but then you're going up this way. And this way, and follow your head over. Eight. behind you should you be doing it that much or no it shouldn't really For now yeah you should feel it touch your okay. spine this, and or tailbone and this, or butt this, this. then it probably sticks out more okay so from right where you are we're not going to add in the feet like sensei's doing so what you should do is take your right foot forward about one natural step length relax it like you kind of do for those of you that know cat stance like you're going to do a cat stance on this front leg bring your back heel up so that you're on the ball of the foot. And as we cut, we're going to do this hip a little bit and cut. Hey. Hey. Up. should be up sharply like I'm doing a cat stance but with the foot behind me. This Uh, 
right, and Greg, stay right where you are. Everybody else, one more step. Hey. Stop. Good. Turn around. What there? As I'm coming down, as I'm moving at the same time as I'm coming down, that's uh, that's a fine line. Okay. Uh, so what, what is the technical? Yeah. In theory, the, it, the eye speed hip hand still applies. Okay. That never changes. So the feet are going to go slightly ahead of the hands, but not slide, stop, move hand. So the same as like, a punch if we were just doing like doing a punch. It yeah. would be so close that you might not even know the difference. Is Absolutely. It? All right, one more time. Come Eight. on. Eight. 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 Up. Cheek. Turning. What there? Eight. Eight. Up. Come on. I want you to take your left hand off. You take your sword hand. I want you to dip it point down, back of the blade towards you. You're going to bring it across, letting it rotate so that the cutting edge now comes towards your armpit. Grab it with your left hand. Put grab it down by your belt. Grab the handle with your left hand. Grab the blade just under the handle with your left hand. And that's how you do it. Okay. You have to realize this is a wooden sword. This is a bokken. You would not do this with a live oh, blade. You'd actually sheath it. Yes. That's, we don't have sheath for these, so we're grabbing it. But this is how you would grab it. If we're going to actually sheath it, we would sheath it. Yes. But we're not going to do that today. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Close. Close. All right. Any immediate questions on Mengta? Uh, isn't there a, a, a sword style? Unsheathing the sword to quickly strike an opponent? Yeah, yeah, that's what we teach them. Yeah. But we don't start with sword. We start with wood. Listen. I always like the way Hanshi used to put it. He's like, when you were tiny children, no matter who you are, and your parents decided to teach you how to feed yourself, they gave you a rubber coated spoon. This, why is that? So you don't hurt yourself. You don't hurt ready. yourself. Not ready for the other spoon. And how do we know? That your parents did not first day hand you a fork because your face does not start up with fork marks, which is exactly what would happen if you gave these whatever age would be when you do that. One or two year old a fork and decided to let them feed themselves. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Same thing. We start with the wood. Then we graduate to what's called an iaito, which is a dull metal sword with scabbard. And by dull, depending upon which one you get it can mean butter knife dull, or it can mean like most of us have not really razor sharp, but it'll cut you if you don't get it. Then, when the time is ready, after many, 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 many years, you graduate to a live sword. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In the in that vein, this is why we do it, and the other. One, most of you may have never heard me talk about uh, this one. It's another old Japanese martial arts saying. Saramo kikara no ichi ochiru. You ever heard that one before? Saramo kikara ochiru. Even monkeys fall out of trees. Anybody know what that means? You may have all the knowledge of the world, but you can still screw up. That's right. Everybody makes mistakes. We're human. Monkeys, masters of trees, even they fall out of trees. And the reason I say that is, again, kind of leads into what or falls out of what we were talking about. Hachi tells this story. He actually saw this. He was there and watched the guy do it. He was at a tournament one time in Japan when he was a young karate student. And they had brought in, they, the organizers of this tournament, had brought in a very, I don't know the guy's name. If I told, if I could remember, and I told you, you wouldn't know it either. 
but at the time, an extremely experienced, high-ranking, like eighth, ninth Don master swordsman. And what his intent was, this was the stage, everybody ought not to do, we're gonna do a demo. Black stage curtain. His intent was to come running out, do a draw cut, and then do whatever it was he was about to do. Right, she says he comes running out, he goes to do his draw, short stroke the draw, pull, cut through the scabbard, cut through his own thumb. He said, all you saw was this white Japanese thumb against a black stage background as the guy continued to run off the stage. Taro Moki Taro Q, right? Did he finish it before he ran off? Nope. Anyway. Put the, screwed up the draw, cut the thumb off, and he kept running on stage. <laughs> Then Hunchy says, the following year, it was next year's tournament, same tournament, same tournament, same guy, same demo, black glove on his left hand to hide the fact that he, this was well before we could read Hagrid. So he was now a nine-fingered swordsman. Sounds like a cool name, actually. A nine-fingered swordsman. Oh, we not listen to any part I don't know if I would watch that. Did we not listen to any part of the first 10 minutes of this class? Did, did we learn nothing? from last week. No, sir. The best thing you do right now is just shut up. <laughs> okay. All right, here's what I want you guys to do. Uh, Greg, since I uh, grabbed that red uh, pad right there, uh, Brandon, Trevor, grab uh, uh, grab that black one right next to him. Uh, you two can grab that one. Get out here, give yourselves plenty of room. Give yourselves room, do we not make exceedingly clear? The give yourself part, sir. Yeah. Oh, okay. This way. Yeah, look at all this free space. Yeah, you, you guys know the monkey and the football edge? guys are going to pair up as the pairs that you are. You're going to be on opposite sides of the bag. Not yet. We're going to watch first. We're going to make our stance here. Give yourself, you know, kind of a short stance up. We're going to alternate. I'm not going to count this, but you guys are going to alternate. One to the other. Right. Slide in. Cut. Slide back out. Slide in. Cut. Slide back out. Plus, 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 plus. What we are trying to see here is a can you hit the bag versus skimming the bag. And second, will you do that? That's not what I want. I want. Yes, plus. Hey, should plus. I come off that bag? Much, if any. Okay. Through this shibori motion. Okay. Oops. Oops. Since I brought it up accidentally before somebody asked the question. Back in the samurai days, Sekigahara, 1600, 1500 into 1700, the capital of Japan was not Tokyo, it was Edo, farther south. Southwest, I believe, uh, from modern day Tokyo. Just north of there, there was a dividing line. The main, when we think of Japan, 
Japan is actually something like a hundred and some odd different islands throughout that arc right there. But when people say Japan, what they think of is Honshu, which is the main island. So that's what I'm talking about right now. Honshu. Okay. Um, uh, just north of Edo and Tokyo, there was a dividing line made into two provinces. The north part was Hoga, the bottom part was Iga. Two, two provinces. There. The northern part, sword style, was a more power oriented style. The south part was a more speed and finesse style. Technique's exactly the same, just how they emphasize. Koga comes from back here. Big power strokes. More power, slower. Iga fought from here. Quicker. If you sacrifice a little bit of power, this was pretty good. Really good. Yeah. Then it kind of evens out. But it's fast. Hmm? It was fast. Oh, no. If you see me do this, I'm drifting back to Iga. And we do both styles. The taijutsu that we do is Iga. The Iago that we do is Koga. So sometimes Thank you for confusing us. Hey, my job. All right. So let's do that. Yeah, you guys kind of, I think, run this. Are you got nothing behind you with the door where you are, Brent? Thank you. Yeah, you guys kind of take this one. You guys square off go this way. And you guys come this way. All right, again, I'm not going to count. I'm just going to take two on Whoever the most senior person is, is going to start. And it's just going to go one for one. This is not about speed. You just going to slide in, hit, slide back. Can Give it a second, me? the next person go. Can you remind me, how do we pull it out? Yeah, the... First of all, turn it over. There you go. Reach across to your thumb on top. And you pull it out. Just like that. Yep. There you go. All right, one, turn it over. We're going to cut him, not beat him to death. Close. Not death. Over. 180 degrees. There we go. All right, how'd you bet? Um, on one. Uh, oh, okay, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I want you to do 10 more cuts, then put the sword away, put the bag away.
Tag him up over there in the corner. We'll let John James deal with the rest of it. All right, good stuff. Here's what we want to do now. All right, uh, if you want to take uh, Jackson again, you can pair up one, you pair up with Greg. All right, now, all right, we're going to Now we got paired up. Now, why? Oh, let me back up. How many people walk around the street with a sword? Besides you? Besides no, me. Not, 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 not unless you're a cosplayer, sir. Right. It's a loaded question, but I'll leave it alone. It's a loaded question. Of course, it's a trick question. You guys have known me long enough. Anything is a trick question. The answer is all of you. Right. Yeah. Oh, so. Why learn? Why in modern day society would we want to learn swords? And don't say zombie apocalypse. Not everyone has a firearm. I said don't say zombie apocalypse. Because I'm pretty sure that on a daily basis there are only maybe two, three, maybe four people in here that have ready access to a sword on a fairly regular basis. The concept can be used with a lot of different things. There we go. Exactly. Drawing a sword. Is the exact same way you draw a pistol, in case you didn't know that. How you move a sword is how you can move your body. The Taijutsu that we study here is the great. It starts out as a grappling art. It, well, let me rephrase that. It starts being taught as a grappling art. So basically, where it came from, samurai on the battlefield, they didn't go in barehanded. Anybody know how the samurai fought in what order? Uh, what, what weapon order? Um, the belt, bones. Okay. Uh, and then I think it uh, adds like some spears in it, and right. then uh, there's more shield combat. And so no shield. So Very rare. Um, you, you're on the right track. Depending on the historical period, gun, um, then bow, then the spear, then long sword, then shorter sword. Okay, let me think for a minute. Okay, uh, yeah, not bad. Both of them. We'll we'll leave gun out for just just a moment. But you're you're right. Depending upon historical period, because there was a time where they went to gun. Samurai started as mounted archers. That's how they always started. That was their big thing. Okay. Once they got on the ground, or if they started on the ground, it was spears. Okay. If they were mounted archers, they didn't have a spear with them. So they either started on foot with spear or they started on horseback with bow. Then when that went to you know where, out came the sword. Long sword, short sword, knife, man reeking. Oops, I'm out of everything. And it's hands. Right? So they didn't fight different with their hands than they did their sword. That's the exact same thing. That's where the Taijutsu comes from. So, as Greg pointed out, the principle is the important part. Anchi always said the principle transcends technique. Right. So it doesn't matter nuclear weapons, fists, feet, guns, sword, knife, bat, front bumper of your car. Principle remains the same. Right. Okay. Well, okay. Well, right. So having said that, um <clears throat> just for 
for simplicity's sake, he's going to cross hand grab. Just like I grab my sword. Right. The exact same position, exact same finger tension, and it puts that knuckle right about where I need it on that pressure point. So he's got a couple of choices. He either tries to keep the grip and he goes into here and gives me all that, or he lets go, lets that slide, but I've still got this. And we still make life easy. So this shibori motion, the same gripping, is how I'm going to grip him. Oh, I just give you that whole back, so I just can't get fingers up to give myself more work. But if for whatever reason, just here, I make my sword grip. One of the reasons that we don't grab, we grab, is if I just grab hold of it, I've got no leverage. I've got no place for that energy to go to. But if I grab, I've got some place on the ground. How is that? Is that why you tend to focus less on uh, these two uh, fingers right here whenever they make a punchy motion? So that way they emphasize more power. Uh, uh, define the focus less. Well, uh, not necessarily like uh, train the knuckles here more, uh, but you know, still use this, you know, in a tight fist. When I extend, you know, I don't feel as much power over here. I want it to be straight over here with my two knuckles, right? But I I'm still using that. Uh, Sort of like this, uh, this, these uh, two fingers here is like a flick into like a more uh, concise punch. Yeah. Uh, so because the power is coming out these two knuckles. They're not, it's not coming out these two knuckles. So yes, I want the power transfer that way. Not. I can get my body to do it. Not that way. So yeah. They naturally protrude out more, so it makes sense to hit those two. Right. We're not ever going to fight against the body's natural configuration. So if the body literally is arched a certain way, then that is arched a certain way for a certain reason. <coughs> yeah. I didn't invent the human body to just try to maximize it. It's so I want you guys to turn around, do a cross hand grab, and just work that grip, shibori motion, right side, left side, couple times. Can we also play around with No, that? you cannot. You can do exactly what I just said. How's your match? You missed the first 10 minute ask you when I gave him. About that? Yeah. Did you really? Yeah. <coughs> Any sign of recognition? Or no? Apparently not. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it is. For whatever reason, you get a little cranky after the gym yesterday. It's not sore, it's just stiff. You're trying to, uh, like, it would be better to put the fingers more like along oh, this uh, line? Uh, uh, probably the other line. Why did I just take that back? I don't mind like dressing like that. Yeah, I uh, Young man, um, one, I'm, I'm noting one great kind of asked the question, and I'm seeing a couple other people do this. So, 
Get somebody with a big old giant meat for him. That's not a leg? Yeah, he, he's actually four legged. <laughs> got a tiny crust and just four legged and stuff. Okay, everybody can kind of see the human body is, or forearm is more narrow this way than it is this way, right? Yes. You know, even, like, even here. Yes. Now, most of you are kind of grabbing on the wider part and then trying to make this work and can't find it working for you. Yes. So there's a couple things that need to happen. One, what I need to do is end up with a sword grip on that narrower part of the wrist or yes. forearm. Right. Okay. So I can either readjust him to get it, or once you're used to the position you need to be in, then you can start from this knuckle and make the hand go where you want it to go. But until you get used to this position, you're not gonna find this one. Yes. So what I would suggest for you guys to do is in some way adjust yes. their wrist viewplay. But the key is that you can get this part in the in the slimmest part of the the arm. Right. The uh, what's the word? I don't know the uh, the, uh, the, the vertical base. part or whatever. Yeah. What, oh, did, the, what did you say, the, sir? The narrowest. Narrowest. Yeah, but I don't know how to phrase that. But yeah, narrowest. There are, yes, but there, there's two kind of things that have to happen or are trying to happen simultaneously. I want the web of my hand and my forearm bones to align with the narrowest part of his wrist yes. and his forearm yes. bones. And I'm trying to put this knuckle on that pressure point or that pressure point on the midline. Now, we can agree. This forearm, I cannot do both of those things simultaneously. <laughs> my, my hand isn't big enough to make that happen. Yes. So I gotta pick one. I'm gonna pick this one because I, that makes my hand heavy. Now this just comes from practice, no other reason. But for you guys, you're similar enough size, you wanna try and make both of those things happen simultaneously. Which, which knuckle is it that you need now? The pad of your first report. Okay. Okay. That's what you're actually driving into the handle when you're doing your sheet woody motion. Yes. And the twist is this way. The twist is that way. So thumb high, thumb in and down is the way you're twisting. Yeah. Cool? Yeah. All right, a couple more times. Why? I want you to keep everything you just did, but I want you to twist it the other way. Right, that's my bad. I told the that one. I saw you do it. That way. Object rest mode. It is you move your body. That's what I want. So whether or not you let go of this one, it has to be a So yeah. Okay. 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 You want to tag the wrist here so you can have the So as soon as you start to get in and reach around the side, you defeated the whole concept. Or you want to help it out. Two more times, each person, and then y'all back.
questions on that? Yes, Anyone sir. Concerns? Yes, but not right now. Okay. Um, general rotation of the risk, would you, it's, I know that there's already a twist to it, but correct me if I'm wrong, there's also a downwards push to be able to sustain push to that. Maybe. I, I agree with what you're trying to say, but it, it, it doesn't hold true all the time because it's not always down. There is, for those of you that have heard this speech last year about the tor toroidal flow of energy, that's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make this helix into them and down their arm. So whether that helix goes down, goes straight, goes up, or even twists forward, but pulls back at the same time. So I agree with what you're trying to say, but again, it's not a universal statement. Well, because yeah. I was, I was gonna say your energy, whether it's down, you're going out, you're going away, you're pushing Brandon, come out, on. away from you. As I'm here, as I'm here, as I'm here. The way that we were doing it, you know, day one, minute one, baby step. point is that I want this spiral somewhere a little bit in each front. All the way up from my tip, from the floor, through my legs, through my hips. Now, when we were working before, trying to do it <coughs> short, we did fast. If I bring it all the way from the floor, I didn't change really how much force I put into it, just the length of travel. And that was very slowly and with almost no force. So that's what we're trying to do. Because again, it doesn't necessarily have to be down. It can be sideways. It can be whatever you want. Been there for a year and a half now, I guess. Um, 